Welcome to First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut, where we, like many of the UCC, are fond of saying, whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is a challenging day for us to come together as we once again remember another school shooting. So I invite you now to pause and quiet in prayer and take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out the love of God as we cover all those who are hurting this morning as they miss these little ones and their teachers and the 18-year-old and those who are injured and hurt in spirit and in body after these days. Deuteronomy 6.18 reads, Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go with you. Nine-year-old Ellie Garcia was scheduled to read this verse at her church on Sunday morning. But she was shot and killed at school on Tuesday. Ellie loved to dance play sports, hang out with her family, and go to church. To say that bad things happen in our world and that life is filled with beauty are both understatements. At our Shoreline Interfaith Clergy Gathering this week, we voiced gratitude for many aspects of life, and we recognized that we are living and layers of awful. We are a people struggling and working hard to climb up the mountains of hope. A priest named Vadim wears a bulletproof vest and drives around to the frontline villages in the Ukraine. He delivers water. Not enough for one person, but they share. He encourages people to get out of harm's way the harm of the war, that is. And because when they do leave, they become refugees, people who are seeking housing, food, and help, neither option is promising. Today, I am surrounded by physical beauty. I have enough to eat. I have plenty of water, clean water to drink and I'm relatively safe. However, the people in the grocery store in Buffalo probably felt relatively safe too. Generally, we live by a human covenant, a code. We have an agreement not to walk into stores, places of worship, theaters, businesses, and schools, especially schools, and shoot random people, especially children. Recently, I learned that the overwhelming statistic for Connecticut is that every county in Connecticut is involved in human trafficking. Every county in Connecticut is involved in human trafficking. Have we moved from the auction block of selling enslaved people to humanizing those created in God's image, selling human beings to horrific stations of life, to selling people online or at truck stops or through a warped union of people and places professing to do good? Are we changing, adapting, and extending modes of slavery? Engaging and continuing horrendous forms of psychological, social, physical, emotional, sexual, spiritual abuse. The trauma, the traumatic effect throughout the years to this day, devastating. So here we are, angry, exhausted, and overwhelmed by layers upon layers of awful. 
People have been preyed upon by religious institutions or abused in homes, places that were supposed to be trustworthy environments, places where love prevails, not violence. It is clear that we find ourselves in earth-shattering need. The earth is literally shaking and flooding and burning too. The state of our environment seems to match the state of our human hearts. Perhaps pre-COVID, only certain demographics could see the world's layers of oppression and awful. Maybe a global pandemic pulled the curtain back a bit and provided a wider view of the world, a larger lens. Now more of humankind can see the pain with which a larger society is living. My fear is our extremely bruised, broken, and wounded siblings do not have enough avenues for healing. Scars are continually torn open. And when that happens, the emotions have to go somewhere. Sometimes it's self-harm, and other times it's a blind rage of violence. Ellie was going to read in her church Sunday, do what is right and good in God's sight so that it may go with you. Commit this verse to memory. Do what is right and good in God's sight so that it may go well with you. Now this call includes our neighbors, all of them, because we are woven together, a people wonderfully and uniquely created by God and worthy to be loved. Created in the image of God and worthy to be loved, all of us. A sweeping overview of Ellie's verse from Deuteronomy is that Moses gave a charge to keep God's commandments and reminded those who heard these words that negligence will ruin, will destroy life, will ruin us. Church family and community, we are in a period of cleanup. We have a mandate that Moses proclaimed to do what is right and good. Now, a simple and practical example is we're, we're about to approach summer and work days of cleanup are impending, of course. We'll have, see ads everywhere. Come help clean up the shoreline. Come help clean up the roadside. Come pay attention. Be in tune with what is around us. Help take care of it. Take care of the earth. Now, as we care for our earth, let us ponder the internal cleanup that we need to do as well. Are we in tune with humanity, with those needs of ourselves and of others, our neighbors? Who and what are we neglecting? For a moment, wonder with me, what are we missing? Maybe take a piece of paper and pen, write it down, what are we missing? How do we invite a relationship of truth, a relationship that expresses need? Or how do we provide homes of safety or support mental health care for those who struggle or hold accountable those who harm? And how do we do a mixture of all the above covered with the balm of healthy given love, seasoned with prayer? As we ponder the house of care, prayerfully hear these words about living in and out of faith offered to the community of Ephesus. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious creator, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know God better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which the eternal one has called you, the riches of God's glorious inheritance in God's holy people with incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength God exerted 
when he was in Christ. Listen, within these days that build layers of awful, we have the power of love that conquers death. How do we comprehend that? Resurrection is possible even when we don't feel that? How can that be? Maybe today and maybe tomorrow we can only intellectually or theologically believe in this power. Right now, connecting the head and the heart to the hope in Christ feels challenging. Sure, we know it, but feeling it is tough today. Dear ones, it's going to take a minute to feel, to grieve, to connect, to rest, to replenish, and then to get to work. Please give yourselves and others grace. And remember, write it down, remember it, try to believe it. The power of love, truly loving each other, can redirect our paths, can provide hope, can help us all climb the mountains where we are following in the steps of Jesus and actually loving neighbor as self. To do that, we have many venues to go through and many people to help. Laws that need to be changed. Clinics that need to be opened. Homes in which kids need to be fostered. We have a lot of work to do. Today's sermon takes some quick turns and it is completely incomplete. So I have an invitation for you this morning. I invite you to continue writing it. May God be with us all. Amen. Thank you.